Thank you, Senator Lionhelm. Senator Williams, you are, you are on your feet first. I'll go to you. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. And, uh... If we get a speaker going here, thank you very much. You, Senator Lionhelm has a very wrong here, Mr. Acting Deputy President. Leave it to the market is fine when you have a fair competitive market. But the fact is, when cane growers grow their cane, they must take it as quick as possible to the nearest processing plant, the, the, the nearest mill. They can't say, oh, price today, this mill is such and such, and down the road it's a different price, a better price. You can't take it down the road. Mr Acting Deputy President, in 2014 I met with sugarcane growers at Kondong near Mwollombar early in 2014, as I said, at Kondong. I just want to clear that word up. I spoke to my colleague Queensland National Senator Senator Barry Sullivan, welcome to the chamber in June, and we instigated an inquiry through the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Committee in June 2014. We held hearings at Mwollombar, Mackay and Townsville and were attended at various times by Senator O'Sullivan, Canavan, Senator Canavan, Senator Macdonald, former Senator Bullock and Committee Chair Senator Stirl. The sugarcane production contributes $2.5 billion to the Australian economy each year. Largely con concentrated along Australia's eastern coastline in Queensland and New South Wales. That's where the sugar is mainly grown. While the volume of sugar produced by each state, Queensland is the bulk of it, 95 per cent, and only 5 per cent in New South Wales, it is vastly different. There are some issues which are of, of common concern to both states. Wilmar, MSF Sugar and Tully Sugar had given notice to terminate their, their RSSA agreements with Queensland Sugar Limited in 2017. This caused great concern in the industry. As the inquiry progressed, it became clear that grower choice in relation to grower economic interest sugar was an issue of central importance to growers and their representative bodies. Cane growers and the Australian Cane Farm Association suggested that any real choice for cane growers would be removed if the large milling companies were to take control of the sugar marketing sector. Growers were actually acutely aware that they were, that they were at a disadvantage when it came to that, that amount of power the milling companies currently held. The committee was told that, in fact, both sectors of the industry had been experiencing considerable difficulties in their attempts to decide on terms and reach agreements on new contracts. Burdick and District Cane Growers Limited also argued that the tension between growers and millers such as Wilmar had more to do with the imbalance of bargaining power between growers and Wilmar Sugar than it does to Wilmar Sugar being a foreign-owned company. The committee was told there was no statutory or mandatory dis dispute resolution process which would assist sugar industry stakeholders, both cane growers and millers, to resolve commercial disputes. The committee observed the strong interrelationship inter and interdependence inter which exists between sugar cane growers and sugar milling companies. It was clear that neither sector would be able to survive without the other remaining profitable and sustainable. There was a lack of trust on behalf of cane growers in relation to the large milling company, particularly Wilmar. It was agreed that Wilmar needed to come, up to, come to the table prepared to engage in positive negotiations with cane growers and their representatives, and the cane growers needed to show they were prepared to negotiate in a positive way. At the same time of the Senate inquiry, a task force was involved in the development of a code of conduct for the industry, and there was, there was only one recommendation. I was Tell us, Senator, that recommendation we have from our committee. The committee recommends the development of an, and implement, implement, implementation of a mandatory sugar industry code of conduct, acknowledging that, provided appropriate stakeholder consultation is un undertaken, the work of the Sugar Marketing Code of Conduct Task Force may provide a foundation upon which a code of conduct may be established. The code, code came into force in April this year. Quotes from the correspondence we received in my office. Mr Acting Deputy President, from Cane Grouse Mackay, which represents 1,100 members, says the code came into force in April 2017, three years into a bitter dispute triggered by several mill owners attempting to unilaterally take control of all sugar market in their regions. Assisting the resolution of that dispute, the code is now a point of security for us in our future contract negotiations. The code addresses the power imbalance between millers and growers by requiring good faith, fair and honest negotiations without intimidation. In the case of Wilmar Sugar Suppliers in 2017, the Code of Conduct forced the miller to com complete cane supply agreement negotiations and prevented it from continuing to hold growers to ransom ahead of the start of the season. Cane Growers Cairns Region said in a letter to me, 
The Sugar Industry Code of Conduct is a point of security for our organisation in all negotiations with our only available milling company, M MSF Sugar Limited. Senator Lionel talks about the market. I'll repeat what they say. With our only available milling company, MSF Sugar Limited. Should the code be disallowed, our sugar cane producers would be put in an extremely vulnerable position in an area where the mill owners, MSF Sugar, has a regional monopoly. Here's the point, Senators, about monopolies. Tablelands Cane Growers Limited, which represents 80 growers on the Atherton Tablelands, told me this disallowance motion disregards the 2015 Senate Committee's recommendation, prejudges the code formal review in 2018, and was introduced by a senator who has not taken the time to talk to sugarcane growers or our representatives about the industry or, in, in, or its recent history. Cane Growers Proserpine, which represents 200 growers, wrote to me asking that I not support this disallowance and point out it fixes the imbalance between growers and millers. Senator Lionhelm doesn't seem to understand how the sugar industry works. And I note in a new article of the 15th of September he says growers need to accept the new reality of multinational companies owning Queensland sugar mills. But the manager of Prosper and Cane Growers, Mike Porter, in the same article says his growers get about 60 per cent of the estimated value of the cane delivered to the mill, and for Senator Lionham to say that they, that say they get 90 per cent is stretching it. Senator Lionham says that spending a $400 million on the regulation of the sugar industry was a waste, but this was shot down by Mr Porter, who said the rationalisation has created a lot of efficiencies and the Australian industry is one of the most efficient sugar industries in the world and probably the envy of most countries that, that grow sugar. It was Minister Barnaby Joyce, Mr Acting Deputy President, who said to the sugar industry, come to an agreement, get your act in order, make a decision or we will. We said that for months before this was released. Sure, it was backed by Senator Hanson and One Nation. But we launched the inquiry in 2014, Senator O'Sullivan and I. We carried out the inquiry along with other senators here and we saw how the market is simply unfair in the sugar industry. Now, the big end of town has, has a monopoly and dictates the terms or can dictate the terms to the cane growers. Once again, the cane grower, the prime producer, is a price taker, not a price maker. Not many of you in this, this centre would understand what I'm talking about. I've lived it most of my life. And so here's a situation where we've now got a surety, security, everyone's happy. And as I said, Minister Joyce said to them, if you don't come to an agreement, uh, agreement the, the growers and, uh, and companies like Wilmar, we will put a mandatory code of conduct in, and we did. Thank you for honouring your word again, Minister Joyce. And now we've got someone in the form of Senator Lionhelm trying to disallow this, I believe backed by the Labor Party and probably the Greens as well. This is scary. I mean, why have you got such a set on prime producers? If the market was fair, I would totally support this. But the market is not fair. A cane grower must take their cane to the nearest mill within hours of cutting it. There's none of this, oh look, what's the price of this mill today? Oh, it's, it's such and such, I'll, I'll get a quote down the road, we'll take the mill down the road. You can't do that. You've got to rail it to the nearest mill. There are no competition as far as mill goes, there is no competition. So the market is failing, it is unfair, and that's why it needs a code of conduct to, to deliver fairness to the cane growers. And I urge those senators to vote against this disallowance.